Well guys, I am tired of using this makeshift draw bar and spacer on the Atlas Horizontal Mill. So, let's make a proper draw bar and spacer for the Horizontal Mill using the South Bend lathe and the Atlas 7B shaper. Welcome to Journey to Journeyman episode number 31. Okay, so here on my Atlas 618, when I want to use a collet, I uh, take these collets, uh, stick it in, and I have this, this draw bar, the little spacer, and it goes like this. And it, it uh, locks the collet, locks the cutter in to the collet. So I thought, since the horizontal mill is the same, Let's take this over to the horizontal mill. All right, guys, so over here at my Atlas horizontal mill, this will not reach all the way to connect the um, into the collet. So I made this handy dandy extension. And so now I put the extension on here, and that reach but it won't pull it tight because the spacer is wrong so now what I have to do each time I want to use this one is I have to set up more spacers then put this on and then most of the time, I can't remember if this one goes on here or this one. I have to pull it back apart, then put this back on, stick this in, and now I can draw this tight. But what originally came with that is a draw bar that I don't have. So let and a spacer. So. Let's go make this. Now, fortunately, I was able to find the drawings for this draw bar and spacer. And I do believe I got it off vintagemachinery.org. I could be mistaken, but I think that's where I got these from. And so now it's just a matter of making it. Now, fortunately, the diameters of everything is nominal. And I have drill rod that I can use for everything. So I don't have to turn any of the diameters. All I have to do is use my drill rod and make holes in it. And I decided that instead of making a one piece draw bar, I'll just use two pieces and Loctite them together. This fat part here, I need to make a hole in it to accept the other piece of drill rod and also uh, make the flats on it. And the hole that I talked about is going to be a threaded hole, and that's going to accept the other part of the draw bar with Loctite on it. So there I was. Now, those of you who have heard a couple of my fighter pilot stories know that every fighter pilot story in the Air Force starts off with, there I was. So Memorial Day is coming up, and I'm not exactly sure if they celebrate that everywhere, but here in America, we celebrate Memorial Day. And uh, actually, my first child was born on Sunday of Memorial Day, and we always celebrate it on Monday, but he was born on that Sunday, my very first child. Now, my entire military career, I was single with no kids, so I was always looking to do extra flying. And there came a, a flyby that they wanted my squadron to do uh, for Memorial Day, I do believe it was. So, of course, I volunteered, and... Uh, I was number three in the formation, and because this was going to be a missing man formation, the number three guy is the missing man. Now, I'm talking about a four-ship flight. The number three guy is the missing man. And most of this uh, flyby is going to be normal, except for once I get the countdown uh, at show center, I am going to do an afterburner climb out of the formation. Now... Flybys, just like most of the things we do, are timed down to the second. The, the difference is, is if somebody's singing live. Fortunately for us, it was taped, so we knew the music down to the second. 
And one of the things about flybys is you don't want to do your timing to where you go by show center at a slow speed. You want to be coming by at a fast speed, but right on time. So we take off in a normal force ship and we go hang out and we're just marshalling or just flying around and waiting for the guy on the ground, our coordinator, to let us know when they start the music. And when they do that, all we're listening for is uh, ready, they started the music, now. And when we hear that, the flight lead hacks his clock. And now that's going to give us our timing for when we need to be at show center. Now the flight lead has to play our turns and everything so that when we get to show center, we're on time and on speed. Because if you're you're too slow, then it looks kind of chintzy. But if you're if you mess around with your turns and you get your timing off, then you could make it, but sometimes you have to be supersonic, and that's a no-no. So we get our time hack and we're off. He brings us into fingertip formation, and now we're just flying towards show center. Now, I'm making sure the formation looks good. I'm staying in my position like I should, and I'm just waiting for him to clear me off. And then he, he gives me the, okay, uh, number three, you're cleared off in three, two, one, now. And at that time, I lit the afterburner and pulled five to six Gs and went vertical. Now, I had never been the missing man before, and when I did this, when I pulled back and lit the afterburner, the other three of those airplanes instantly disappeared. They were gone immediately. All right, I'm going to try this a different way now, guys. I started with this. This is wobbly. It's off. I broke that. It's uh, de-threaded that, so I'll have to... It's at an angle now, so I'm going to try the single point again. So now back in the air over Miami, I am full afterburner going up. And the people there in the audience, what they see is just a missing man formation. Now what's going on in my airplane is totally different. We are transitioning from a standard formation to a non-standard formation. Guys, I wasn't going to film this because it's just like threading the other one, but I, another lesson that uh, I learned here is this is a high-speed steel um, threading tool that I found in some tools that I bought and it was already cut and so I just you know honed the edge of that and wow it high-speed steel cutting on this drill rod it cuts it like it cuts it like butter I love it it's a it's a wonderful way of, of threading I mean it curls the chip it just just cutting this beautifully. So now back in formation, a standard formation, if I'm remembering correctly, is, is within two miles of each other and within a thousand feet of each other. And you can have all your airplanes within there and only one guy in there is squawking a code for the air traffic controller. And that's usually the flight lead unless there's something wrong with his transponder. Okay, a quick proof of concept. High speed steel. I need to make a flat on there, four flats. So let's let's do this thing. So now back in airplane, what's going on in my plane is as I go vertical and I have the afterburner lit, I start talking to the air traffic controller. And the conversation went something like this. Miami departure, Viper 3 is three miles west of show center. Out of 5,000, climb into 15,000. Now, guys, here on the shaper, what I'm using to index it with uh, for the four flats is just a machinist square. And I line that up and square it off with the, the one flat and then cut the other flat. And now back to the air traffic controller. And so now he gives me my own squat code. He says, Viper 3. Squawk 0122, your new call sign is Jaster1. And then he said, Jaster1, Squawk Ident. So I hit my Ident button and he said, Jaster1, radar contact, say intentions. And I said, Jaster1 wants the RTB to Homestead Air Force Base. And RTB just means return to base. And he said, turn right heading this and contact, uh, contact Homestead Approach on this frequency. And I did that 
and I headed on home single ship. So now you know what's going on in the airplane of the guy that does the missing man formation. All right, so this is what we have. This turned out really nice. The uh, surface finish from that shaper is really good right now. As soon as I can figure out how to cut uh, those high-speed steel tools better, it's going to even improve on that. I'm going to clean that up a little bit with a file, but uh, just to make it look a little nice. Um, I'm going to take this. It goes in here. It gets. I'll use red Loctite on this. That's the permanent stuff. And then this goes on here. And that, ladies and germs, is a drawbar. Well, guys, I called an audible. I'm going to put blue Loctite on this in case this doesn't work out. Uh, case the it needs to be longer be a lot easier to get off and if if I have a problem with it coming off it starts coming off and I don't want it to then I can always red loctite it but for now we're gonna go with the blue all right turned out pretty good um not perfect but I always try for perfect and there's always going to be some imperfection so at least turns out pretty decent. So here we go. Let's put it on the, the correct machine. Alright guys, so now that I have made a, this drawbar, it is easy with the spacer. It's easy peasy now to get this in. Get her tightened up. And now she's ready to go. Okay, lessons learned on this little project. Uh, it was a simple little project, um, single point threading. I watch these guys that do it all the time and they're just so zip, 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 do it. But if you're like me and just do this every once in a while, you have to do it step by step. And also that high-speed steel, a perfectly crowned high-speed steel tool on these small lathes do an absolutely excellent job. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you on the next Journey to Journeyman.